In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I want to offer a very warm welcome to all of you, especially our, our friends from South Africa and those from Kansas and Missouri, and of course all of the friends from, of uh, Lucas and Sarah. This is my first time doing a destination wedding here in our church, so it's great to <laughs> be here. In a very special way, I want to w welcome Lucas and Sarah. The church warmly welcomes you and, of course, desires to pour all of its blessing upon you and your love for one another. So as we, as we are here, we will, we will sing the Gloria, which is the a beautiful ancient hymn of, of our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give in increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite forward Sam, please, for the first reading. A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife, twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. 
Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you, blessed are those who seek you, O God. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you, blessed are those who seek you, O Happy all those who fear the Lord and walk in God's pathway. You will find what you long for, the riches of our God. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. Your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. The peace and the love of God live always in your heart. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because God is, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. (laughs) 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever remains in love remains in God and God in them. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated, just for an hour or so. Again, a warm welcome to all of you, especially, of course, to all of our guests, but especially to those who have made long trips to be here. So so good to have you here. Very glad that we have uh, at least what we call in Minnesota beautiful weather. Of course, (laughs) once again, very warm welcome to Lucas and Sarah. Happy to be celebrating with you. We're, We're, of course, we're in the middle of this, we're right smack in the middle of this wedding. And weddings are those things that always surprise me that we, we actually finish them <laughs> because there, there's so many details that goes into them. And I, unless a person is completely unfeeling and without any nervous, with any nerves whatsoever, most of the time we are feeling anxious and nervous or have some of that because of some of the details or, or perhaps all of the details that go in. So all the the more the reason just to take note that already for our wedding, things have gone very well. No one has fallen on their face. Everyone's come in. We've started on time. The groomsmen look fantastic. The bridesmaids look amazing. Of course, our couple, beyond words, (laughs) wonderful. And the priest is... (laughs) I always want to just emphasize, <laughs> he's bald. But of course, the, the, the beauty is that now that we are gathered, now halfway over with, with the entirety of, of, this, of this ceremony, the church in its wisdom gives us this little space just to breathe, to allow anxieties to go, just to step away for a moment. And we look at something that goes far deeper than any of the deep, any of the details. And that's the beauty of the love between Lucas and Sarah. And it is beautiful. So we're just going to pause and just remember how beautiful it is. Maybe I should just end my homily there. <laughs> just to remember how beautiful it is. But there are a few things that, just, that are present here in our church. A um, few things and few people who are present here in our church. They remind us of how beautiful what, what it is we're doing. The first, of course, is the church itself, which I'm so, I'm really very honored that Lucas and Sarah chose to get married here. But the truth is that they're getting married in a church. And what does that mean? They're proclaiming something beautiful by that. They're saying, we want God. That's a beautiful proclamation. And of course, we also look at it from the other, other way. God is looking at Sarah and Lucas today and saying, I want you guys. <laughs> he wants to be in you. And it, 
it's been such a, a pleasure to walk with you over the, these last years, just knowing that how deeply God is present in your life, both of your lives. And, and He is, just to emphasize it again, we all know it, that He is present here. And, and that, just, to, just to say as well, to choose God, you know, or you know, the other way to say yes to God's invitation is such a courageous thing today. And I think we all know that in our world that is growing increasingly um, easy to turn away from God. Lucas and Sarah and say, no, we want God. We want God in our life. So I, I reference God. That's my first reference. I will reference him again because I'm a priest and I like to talk about God. <laughs> but the other symbol, of course, here is Lucas and Sarah themselves. And we all know them. We look at them and we know that the beauty of their relationship, two of them coming from very different cultures, their willingness, because of their love for one another, to let go of many things. That, in a way, is a symbol of, of friendship. Sometimes our, our world proposes friendship as a way of, I'm going to take from you as much as I possibly can, and if you don't, if you don't give, then, then, you're, then you're dismissed. But, friend, but true friendship is deeply revealed in Lucas and Sarah. And we love one another. And so we let some of what I want go because, because our relationship is more important. And it's, it's, not, it's not taking, it's receiving what the other gives. And, it's, and of course it's looking to give even more for the other. Sarah and Lucas witnessed that beautifully, beautifully. The other symbol that's here is all of you. And it, again, it's beautiful to witness the, the great lengths, the great distances that you have come. You are, the, you, you are here for them. And of course, we're here to witness what they are doing today. And we, we all know that. But what they're proclaiming today is what they desire for you to see and to know it. That they are now no longer just Lucas, and just Sarah, they are Lucas and Sarah together forever. And we know that, that, that our world, like I said Lucas and Sarah, right? Okay. <laughs> they, that, that, the brain thing. So that they, they have chosen to be together forever. And we know that our world doesn't always understand such a mystery, a tremendous mystery. And so they're looking to you to hold on to that truth, what they are deciding today, and the, where the rest of the world might be willing to let go of that. They're looking to you to, to support them, even when it's difficult. So you, you are assigned to us today that marriages need a community, and you are their community to hold them, to hold them up in what they are doing here today. The final symbol I mentioned, I'll go back to God. The final symbol is right here above me, this gift of Jesus on the cross. It's my favorite symbol, but in a way it's, it's a very difficult symbol. You might look at the cross and see, see something like, there, you know, there's death there. It's not a pretty picture. And obviously we are here also in this church and it's very beautiful. <laughs> Our image here is very, very beautiful. But the image of Jesus on the cross is so important because he's witnessing love that is stronger than anything else. Love that is stronger than any of the powers of the world. And so we, if we, even if we just take a step, a brief step away from the suffering of Jesus on the cross, what is he saying as he is there, as his arms are outstretched, as he looks at, at others who are not necessarily liking what he's doing, but as his arms are outstretched, he's saying, I love you. You can do whatever you want to me. Bring on the whole world. I am for you, no matter what, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. The beautiful way the cross is Jesus' marital profession toward all of us. And it, since we're here in church, it, you know, it's for us to listen, even today, even as we're celebrating the love between Lucas and Sarah, 
is to receive that gift more deeply today, the Lord proclaiming that. And it, there, there were so many who were gathered around him as he was on the cross saying, take yourself down, you don't have to be up there. Sometimes the world likes to say that to married couples. As soon as, as, soon as the, a, a serious issue arises, well, if it's not working anymore, let it go. But how beautiful here, we're gathered here, and very soon Lucas and Sarah will be gathered right underneath the cross. And they're going to be professing. They won't be using Jesus' exact words, but they will be professing what Jesus professed by his action on the cross. My love is for you no matter what, no matter what the world brings, no matter how hard it is. We are united together. When we look at Jesus, of course, the, the gift of his life, when he professed that, we know the tremendous fruit that that brought into the world. It's still bearing fruit today. And we know that the love that Lucas and Sarah are going to be professing will bring the most wonderful fruit in the world. Children, of course, are one of those. But more than that, it's, it's unspeakable when we look at couples who stay together and manifest the very love that they have for one another. And today, part of what we're remembering is that love that they're engaging in is not just human love. It's, it's they're, they're allowing divine love to be manifested through them. I am for you no matter what. That's the love of Christ. So we're so excited for you to, that, that, you, that God is you have listened to God's call and you're saying yes to it. So now I am going to stop talking. <laughs> Not quite an hour, but I'll we'll ask you guys to stand and to come towards the, the center. I'm going to invite, invite our wedding party to come for it as soon as, as soon as Lucas and Sarah come. Lucas and Sarah, you have come together in, in the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Lucas and Sarah, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. I am. Since it's your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, turn towards one another, join your right hands, and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Lucas, thank you, Sarah, for my lawful life to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish 
until death do us part. I, Sarah, take you, Lucas, as my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness or in health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Sarah receives this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lucas received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Never seen before, 
and there's love. Oh, there's love. All oh, the marriage of your spirits here has caused him to Stand together, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. And as we pray for Lucas and Sarah, the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, all the bishops, and the clergy everywhere, that they may lead us to deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world and its leaders, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they may continue to find new love for each other with the passing of each day, we pray to the Lord. For Lucas and Sarah, now beginning their married life together, that they may have divine assistance at every moment, the constant support of friends, the rich blessing of children, a warm love reaching out to others, and good health until a ripe old age. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who are sick, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they may be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all of the guests of Sarah and Lucas who are gathered here today, that they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and have safe travel on their journey home, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who have died, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, your sons and daughters, come before you filled with deep joy and gratitude for the love that you have given to Lucas and Sarah and for blessing their love. We ask you would turn toward us and listen to these, our needs, and all of those prayers that are in our hearts, and that you would grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
together. We pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the, re the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Invite you please to kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Lucas and Sarah, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. This time I'd like to invite Lucas and Sarah, please, to, to kneel. We have a special blessing for them today, an ancient blessing, asking God's blessing upon them. If you'd like, I'll raise my hands in blessing over them. You're welcome to raise your hand in blessing as well. O oh God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Sarah, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband Lucas entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Should we stand again? The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. I invite you please to kneel. Communion, once again, I want to offer a very warm welcome to all of our guests who are here. And for that reason, everyone is invited, if you would like, to come forward in the communion line. Communion is normally, traditionally, offered only for Catholics. So if you won't be receiving communion today, simply make a sign like this, and we'll be happy to give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Son. You were 
Stand together. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the in incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so I'd like to invite Sarah and Lucas to come towards the center. I'd like to invite uh, the wedding party to come forward once again. So one final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, and the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite Lucas and Sarah to turn towards the congregation along with all the wedding party. It is my privilege and a joy to introduce to you for the first time as a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Van der Vaart.